How's it going guys? My name is Josh, founder of the Vigor Builder Training System where I help people drop up to 30 pounds of stubborn belly fat in 90 days while building strength and muscle. And today I want to go over how hard should you be training in order to optimize gains, all right? So there's a lot of misconceptions where people think that they should be training to absolute failure in order to make progress, right? And especially because a lot of us are desensitized to, to the weights, right? If we decide to go to absolute failure, we're gonna run ourselves into the ground and essentially give up and risk ourselves in getting injured, all right? So that's what you don't want. You don't wanna get injured just because you wanna build muscle, all right? So should you be going to absolute failure or how hard should you be training in order for you to make gains, all right? So here I have listed the three things that you should be trying to achieve in order to build muscle in the weight room, all right? So you wanna train hard enough so that you recruit enough muscle fibers so that there's enough muscle activation because the more uh, muscle fibers you're able to recruit, the more uh, likely you'll activate muscle protein synthesis, okay? Which is a process in which your body puts on muscle, okay? Also, you want to achieve um, a higher volume. So perform more volume over time. So what is volume? Volume is reps times sets times weight, okay? So as long as you're able to increase volume by increasing the amount of reps or the amount of sets or the amount of weight you're able to perform, then you should see gains, all right? You should start building muscle. So right here I have listed two examples of someone going to failure and someone going just one to two reps shy from failure, okay? So if you go to absolute failure on your first set, let's say it's the bench press, okay? Maybe you get 12 reps, okay? But studies have shown this also, if you go to absolute failure, the uh, other sets, you're gonna decrease performance. You're not gonna be able to get in as many reps, okay? So if you go to failure, the second set, you're not gonna be able to get the same amount of reps, okay? So in the second set, you probably get only eight reps, and in the third set, you probably get six reps. So this leads to a decrease in um, performance and a decrease in volume. You're getting less reps, okay? This is assuming that you're using the same amount of weight for each set, okay? So let's go to person B that decides to not go to failure using the same exact weight. On the first set, he gets 10 reps and maybe he leaves two reps in the tank, okay? This allows for him to get 10 reps in the second set and 10 reps in the third set. So here, he does a total of 30 reps. This person is only able to get 26 reps. So this person has increased performance, increased volume, okay? Now, studies have shown that if you leave one to three reps in the tank, you would see all the same benefits of going to absolute failure. You'll see the same amount of muscle activation, same amount of protein synthesis activated, same amount of, and possibly even more, performance when you're going just shy from failure. What's also awesome about this is that your body doesn't get fatigued over time, so you'll still have energy and motivation to be able to perform well on the following workouts that you may have throughout the week. As opposed to if you go to failure on Monday, there's nowhere near the possibility of you being able to perform as well on Wednesday because your, your central nervous system will be taxed and fatigued. So if you're going just shy from failure, leaving one to two reps in the tank, your body will be able to recover properly and you'll still be able to train as hard, accumulate more volume from week to week, all right? And in turn, you're training smarter and you'll be able to make more muscle gains. So regardless, if you're trying to burn fat or if your focus is just building muscle, it's very important that you strive to put on muscle on your frame because even if you're trying to burn some fat, 
This will increase your metabolism because your body will have to work harder to, re to retain all of that tissue. So I hope this was helpful. Next time you go to the gym, don't go to absolute failure. Leave one to two reps in the tank, all right? Now, if you're a beginner, okay, it's gonna be much harder for you to gauge what failure is. So if you are starting off, I highly recommend that you go to failure just to see what your body is capable of doing. And it's very important that you have a spotter, okay? So have a spotter and go to performance failure, which essentially means that you go until your form starts breaking down. Once your form starts breaking down, then rack the bar and do your next set after resting, all right? But if you're more advanced, okay, you should be able to gauge how much failure is to you, okay? So if you're more of an advanced lifter, just make sure you leave one to two reps in the tank, all right? Hope this was helpful, guys. If you're looking to burn up to 30 pounds of stubborn belly fat in the next 90 days, then leave a comment down below commenting 30 pounds and I'll give you more information regarding my coaching program well, where I'll create a custom done for you meal plan, a custom workout program that you can do in the gym or at home, and you'll have full access to me where I'll be able to answer all your questions so you can break through any roadblocks you may experience during your 90 day journey, all right? Hope this was helpful guys, and if you did find this helpful, please give it a comment, give it a like, share with a friend that you think may find this useful, and thanks for watching guys. Peace.